So thank you, everyone. Thank you for uh, joining us this session. Uh, I really hope that you are going to enjoy this. Uh, as already mentioned by uh, Lubomir, it will be about um, using Formula One telemetry uh, data and uh, doing some processing using Kafka streams. So let uh, us uh, introduce ourselves. Um, first of all, I am Paolo Patierno. I am principal software engineer in Red Hat, working on the uh, Apache Kafka team and even on the StreamZ upstream project, where StreamZ is a CNCF project which is about running and deploying and handling as well Apache Kafka on uh, Kubernetes. And I am presenting today with Tom. Can you introduce yourself, Tom? Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Tom Cooper, and uh, I work on the same team, Paolo, on the Strimzy project, uh, and I've got a background in stream processing. Thank you, Tom. So let's see what we are going to see uh, today. We are going to see how to build an event streams pipeline using, as you already mentioned, uh, Formula One telemetry data as a kind of example of uh, uh, events that we can ingest into our system. So what are the kind of problems that we want to solve every time we need to build an event streams pipeline? First of all, we need to ingest events in a uh, reliable manner so we don't want to lose events, we want to store events, things like that. The other part is to um, quite often to integrate different systems uh, with our ingestion system. So the events are coming from uh, something that is not able to talk, for example, the same protocol as the ingestion system. So we want to integrate this uh, system from where the events are coming and ingesting them in our final ingestion um, framework. And then uh, on the other side of the pipeline, providing some uh, outcomes, some insights of the the events that we are getting in the pipeline itself. Um, of course, ingesting events is useful when you are doing something with these events, with the data that are coming in your pipeline. So we will see how we can process the events in real time, so for getting insights in real time. Um, finally, if you have events, if you have data, if you are processing this data, you would like even to show some insights, some outcomes of this processing somewhere. And uh, most of the times they are just dashboards that you you can use for showing this data flowing through the uh, pipeline. Uh, we also see how to run and deploy an entire pipeline somewhere. So let's dig into it uh, more deeply. The way that we are going to show this um, kind of demo is uh, starting from Formula One telemetry data, as you already mentioned. We don't have, of course, uh, a real Formula One car. Uh, it's quite impossible to find some real Formula One data uh, on Google, on internet in general. So what I found, thanks to my son, uh, who is uh, eight years old playing with Xbox, is that the Formula One 2020 game from Codemasters provides you the telemetry data in real time on U, uh, UDP. So what we did is um, writing, first of all, a library in order to decoding the Formula One packets coming from UDP in uh, a POJO corresponding uh, Java classes that we can handle uh, easily. So the first problem to solve is uh, where to ingest this telemetry data coming from the Xbox. Um, one of the most well-known systems for ingesting data is um, Kafka. Kafka is, first of all, a messaging system that you can use for public subscribe but um, over the years uh, he becomes really uh, one of the most important data streaming platform for event ingestion so uh, because I uh, also with Tom works on Kafka of course we choose Kafka as the best ingestion system for using for this demo but the first thing to solve is uh, how to, to do to, to go from UDP packets coming from the Xbox to Kafka um, you can think that we can just write an application listening on UDP port and then using a Kafka uh, producer API for writing to Kafka topic, but in order um, to write this, uh, there is a lot of code more or less to write, right? So we decided to use, to use um, Apache Camel. Apache Camel is a project, is an integration framework in order to integrate different systems. So you can just easily write an application using a DSL for describing uh, what they call a route. So the path that your data has to follow. In this case, just reading from UDP and then writing to some Kafka topics uh, in a really simple way, as we will see uh, in the next slide. The next part, of the, um, of the pipeline is uh, in this place running a 
um, Kafka Streams API application that will do some processing, and uh, Tom will um, will explain more about that later. And then finally, having another Camel application to integrate Kafka with InfluxDB. So getting the data, the insight from the Kafka topics, and writing them as points in the InfluxDB uh, in order to use InfluxDB as a data source for the um, framework uh, for the platform, Grafana platform, that we are going to use to show some dashboards with this data in real time. Uh, all this pipeline will run on Kubernetes. Uh, in this demo, uh, it's going to use OpenShift, which is the kind of Red Hat uh, enterprise distribution of Kubernetes. And we are going to use StreamZ for deploying the uh, Apache Kafka cluster on Kubernetes really easily, uh, because uh, StreamZ will provide some native custom resource for describing your Kafka cluster, your Kafka topic, and it will take care for you to deploy the Kafka cluster uh, with not so much effort, even handling upgrades and things like that. So let's jump into detail of all these pieces that are making this pipeline. First of all, ingesting the data from UDP, so from the Xbox. Um, this is, uh, as you already mentioned, a Camel application, uh, which is made by a first route, which is just using a UDP component for getting the data from UDP. And yeah, it's just a kind of meta language here, but uh, Camel is more or less this really these three instructions, where you can just read from something, in this case UDP, write into something. And in this case, I'm using a multicast in order to have three destination routes because at some point I will write different uh, uh, data uh, in different in three different topics in Kafka. Three different routes because one route is about just uh, getting from UDP and then writing directly to Kafka topic, the raw packets with no processing. Um, the second one, applying a filter. So even in Camel using its DSL, you can just filter on something. In this case, I'm filtering events like speed trap and fastest lap, things like that. And finally, you can do some simple aggregation. Uh, the UDP packets coming from the Formula One 2020 games are packets where in one packet, you have all the information about all the drivers. What we want is having uh, uh, one packet for each driver with the telemetry data. So we are going to do some aggregation of a specific window of different packets and aggregating the data for a specific driver, then sending to a corresponding telemetry driver's topic. So this is a really simple way to write an application for doing this kind of stuff. The next step, and Tom will dig into it more deeply, is about processing the telemetry data coming from the drivers. And uh, the example would be just about uh, processing the average speed in the last five seconds. Uh, and finally, we have to move the data from Kafka topics to InfluxDB as time series database as data source for our Grafana dashboards. So still, again, simply using Camel instead of writing our own application uh, consuming from Kafka and writing to InfluxDB, simple DSL to process these, um, uh, the data coming from uh, the three different topics that we are using, the drivers, one, the average speed, and the events, and then writing to the corresponding database, Formula One in InfluxDB, in corresponding different measurements that are more or less tables in our database. So processing and writing here. Say that these are the three main pieces that are building our demo. Let's uh, hand over to Tom that is going to explain how our, uh, our Kafka Streams API application is working. Thanks, Paolo. Um, so yeah, so Paolo's spoken about the uh, way we glue this pipeline together with the Apache Camel that kind of provides that basic extract, transform, load functionality. Um, but what you need to do once you've got your fantastic data into your into into Kafka is actually do something with it. You need to enrich it. You need to get some some value out of it. So to do that, we're going to use Kafka Streams, uh, which is a, a Java library that's provided part of the Kafka distribution. Uh, and what it allows you to do is just build a Java program that gives you a fully featured stream processing pipeline. So if we can go to the next slide, Paolo. So what we've got here is the uh, first part of our pipeline. So what we're trying to do is calculate the average speed of each driver in five second windows. Um, so to start with, as with everything with Kafka, you need to be able to uh, tell Kafka what the raw bytes it's storing are. So that's what this setup does. It just provides a way to deserialize those UDP packets. And that comes from Paolo's uh, library. So once you've got that setup, you can then connect to your Kafka uh, topic. So that's what we're doing here. We create the first um, K stream. 
And what we're doing here is we're going to get just window each of the, the driver's information into these five second windows. So that's, the, so that's the first operation. So in operation one here, we connect to the Kafka uh, topic and we provide those, those serializers and deserializers. Then we do some filtering to filter out bad, uh, bad messages. And we can do that. That's just uh, based on a predicate. So you can provide any function that just provides a Boolean there. In this case, we've got something built into the, to the library Paolo built that tells us if it's a bad message. Then we do a map operation. And what we're doing here is just stripping down all the driver information or the detailed driver POJO. All we care about is the driver ID and the speed. So at the end of step three, what we've got is a stream of tuples, which is just driver ID and speed. And then the, uh, the, the aggregation part is that first we want to group those together uh, into, into just drivers. So you've got collections per driver, and then you need to window those based on their time. So in Kafka, uh, every message has a timestamp attached to it. But in stream processing, time is important. You need to, there are three main types of time in, in stream processing. There is the processing time, which is the time that the message is actually looked at by the thread in this JVM that's doing an operation on it. There's ingestion time, which means different things in different systems. But in Kafka, it's the time that the uh, message is written to the log. And then there's event time, which is the time that's inside the packet that arrives at, at Kafka. So you can imagine this is the time on your temperature sensor or your, your weather sensor. Or in this case, it's the, the time that comes from the Xbox, the time that was, was there. So what we're doing here is we're rendering to five second windows. And the default in Kafka is to use the event time. So that's what we're going with. If you've ever done any windowing in stream processing, you'll also know that there's various different types of window, tumbling, hopping, sliding, session windows. What we're doing here is what Kafka calls a uh, tumbling window, which is the simplest type of window. It's the default window. And all that is is a five second chunk. When the five seconds are done, it completes and it moves on to the next one. There's lots of uh, uh, other configurations that you can do with windows uh, around grace periods and out of order events. But I'm not gonna go into that now, uh, but it's definitely worth looking at. So if we go to the next slide, Paolo. So what we've got here is uh, the, the next stage of the pipeline, which is so we've essentially got collections in five second chunks uh, of our driver's information. So we will have a bucket of five seconds and in there we will have a bucket for each driver with their speeds in. And so what we could do out of there is simply do a, a kind of another map operation that takes each of those bucket collections and turns them into a count and sum, and then do a reduction on that to, to get the final average speed. But what we're showing here is another uh, aspect of the, of the Kafka Streams library, which is that of a K table. Uh, and what a K table is, is essentially like a table in a database. It's like a materialized view of your stream. Uh, and this builds on this uh, idea of a kind of table stream duality, which is this idea that, the, that a stream is a change log for a table, essentially. Um, if you think about word counts, you could have a stream that is simply the words, and then a table realization of that is the frequency of the words. So what we're doing here with the speeds is we're creating a K table that firstly just has the driver ID count and sum updated every five seconds. Now, what K tables allow you to do is they allow you to be a source for other streams that you might want to build off that. But crucially, what they do is they also back up your state. So behind every K table is a RocksDB instance. And every change that's made to that RocksDB instance is streamed back down to your Kafka topic. And this kind of state backup uh, will happen wherever you have state in a, in a Kafka streams topic. So earlier when we had the windows, that will also be backed up to a Kafka topic, those, each of those windows and collections. And that provides you fault tolerance and also comes in uh, when we talk about scaling a bit later. So we've got this K table here. And then what we do is we take each of those rows. So every time they're updated every five seconds, we stream them out to another table that simply does the uh, averaging. So at the end of this, what you've got is a K table instance that has driver ID and average speed. And what we're not showing here is that the next operation is simply to send that change log of that table, essentially, the, the every time that updates back to the Kafka topic, which is the final Kafka topic um, that we then connect up to, to InfluxDB. So if we can go to the next slide, Paolo. So now you've got your whole pipeline, you've written it, you've got your Java program. Uh, what do you do with it? Um, stream processing systems can be very complex if you've ever used Apache Storm or Flink uh, or, or Spark Streaming. Um, but Kafka Streams is very straightforward. You just have a Java program. So long as you can provide it the contact, inf the config information, and it can see the broker, you can run your stream processing pipeline. So if we go to the next slide, Paolo. So 
one final thing I want to touch on here is how you scale it, because in stream processing, scaling is an important thing. You need to be able to cope with high volume coming in to be able to, to, to do parallel processing. So Kafka Streams library is built on top of the consumer API in Kafka. So it has this intelligent uh, client attitude. So it will be able to balance um, between the members of its consumer group. So if you've just got, if you just start up one Kafka application, then what you've essentially got is uh, you'll stream from every partition on the input topic. So if we've got four input topics, all the information will be round robined into this one application. What's actually happening under the hood is that Kafka Stream still treats this as four separate uh, jobs, essentially, by partitioning that internally. So if we go to the next slide, Paolo. So what happens when you want to scale up is you just simply start new instances of your um, application. And because it's just built on top of the consumer API, when you start new applications, that's a new member of your consumer group. And the client API in there will rebalance the, the available partitions between your available uh, applications. Now, the one thing you have to care about in stream processing is that state we were talking about. So we've got the windows, we've got those K tables. How do we now chop up the state that's inside there so it runs on different machines? Well, this comes into how we back it up to Kafka. But because each of these tasks internally into each of these applications is already partitioning that state, essentially, when they back up to the Kafka cluster, that state's already separate. So if it's all running in one, you've got four tasks in one looking at those topics. If you split it up into three, you've got two tasks in one, one in each, and they can just go to the particular partition topic when they start up and recover their state and get processing. So this is a very straightforward way to scale up and scale down and also provides that fault tolerance. So uh, if we go to the next slide, Paolo. So that I think that was a, a whirlwind tour through uh, through Kafka streaming. Uh, and what I'll do now is I'll hand over back to Paolo to, uh, to show you this wonderful pipeline working. Yeah, thank you very much, Tom. So it's right now the time for, for the demo. Let's see if God's uh, demo will be with us today, right? So as you can see here, um, as you already mentioned, I have my OpenShift cluster running. Um, for deploying everything, I have used the, the StreamZ operator. So StreamZ, as you already mentioned, is a CNCF project that uh, allows you to deploy and handle really easily uh, a Kafka cluster. So I already deployed everything. So just describing uh, my um, Kafka custom resource. Uh, if we take a look at the YAML here, you should see that um, you can just describe your cluster in terms of configuration, in terms of listeners for exposing your cluster outside of OpenShift, the number of replicas, the version to use for Kafka, and things like that. Everything about Kafka, just as a native Kubernetes resource. So without dealing with deployment, stateful set, it will, the StreamZ operator to do everything for you. Uh, so I use the StreamZ operator for deploying. I have my Kafka cluster running here. I also have uh, Grafana in InfluxDB running and um, the Kafka to InfluxDB camel application and the uh, uh, Streams API application for processing the data. And uh, here, as you can see, we have some dashboards with some graphs uh, in order to show the, uh, the data that I'm going to, to produce. So, of course, we don't have my son right now here to playing Xbox. So what I found uh, uh, that was really useful was a uh, Python library that is able to uh, record some um, uh, telemetry data from the Xbox. So actually li listening on UDP and storing this information in SQLite database. So uh, on my um, screen here, you can see I have a console where uh, I have, uh, I'm going to use this uh, Python script not only for recording something that I did um, yesterday with my son playing, but mostly even uh, um, you can play, you can replay this telemetry data from the database. So let me start the um, telemetry application to, to so the, 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 the player application to produce these events. And as you can see here on the Grafana dashboard, let me just move this on the other screen. Um, you can see here that on the dashboard um, data are coming through the system. So uh, we have uh, the, the speed about cars, the engine revolution, the throttle, the brake, uh, uh, other information about the G-force, uh, the damage uh, on the wing, front and rear, and even information about the events that I was mentioning about speed trap and fastest uh, lap. There are other dashboards that we made 
like for example, the one more specifically related to a driver. So you can get uh, different graphs with more information about throttle and brake, uh, engine and speed uh, even uh, plotted on the same graph because it's uh, interesting to correlate for a Formula One engineer all this kind of information, but even information about the brakes temperature, the steering, uh, the G-force again, and uh, even the shape of your tires while uh, during the race. Uh, all useful information for improving your performance, right? And the last one is about the, the um, Kafka Streams API application, where, uh, yeah, it's just showing uh, this average speed in the last five seconds. And uh, as uh, Tom already mentioned, uh, you can see this kind of spike uh, because uh, we are using these uh, five seconds tumbling windows uh, in, in Kafka Streams application. So this is most likely um, how the demo is um, is working and what we uh, wanted to show you, how to build a kind of pipeline for uh, events and how to use a cool things like Formula One telemetry data for, for showing that. Uh, coming back to the slides, um, of course, the uh, later on uh, after the, the, um, the session. Uh, there are um, some resources that you can use in order to play with this. There is a blog post that we wrote on the Grafana website about explaining more or less what we just explained right now during the session. Uh, some links to the decoding library and uh, corresponding Kafka project with all the instruction that you can uh, uh, use in order to run your pipeline locally or even on the uh, Kubernetes or OpenShift cluster that you have. There is also a video that I recorded with my son. So there is actually my son playing. So you should see on one side of the screen, the, the, the cars and the Formula One 2020 games uh, playing and on the other side, the Grafana dashboards updating in uh, in real time. And of course, because during this uh, session, we explained a lot of technology or we trying to provide you some hints about the technologies that we are using. Uh, there are some links to, for example, the, the specification of the packets of the Formula One 2020 games, uh, links to Kubernetes and OpenShift, uh, to Apache Kafka, to the Streamzy project that, because I work on Streamzy, I really would like to hear you some feedback on Streamzy if you are going to use for something on uh, about Kafka on Kubernetes, uh, even about Camel for um, uh, integrating uh, all the system that we are going to use, and even finally for InfluxDB as the time series database and the Grafana uh, platform for showing all the uh, data on the dashboards. So that's all from our side. Thank you very much for joining us. I don't know if uh, we have time or we have run out of time. If no time and if no questions, we will be on Discord. Uh, in order to answer your questions, if some. Thank you. Okay, so I see there are some questions uh, in the chat. Uh, do you want me to read it for you? Or, uh, okay, maybe the first one, uh, there is, uh, how does KML compare to Kafka Connect? So, um, there are different projects, right? So, KML provides, um, a lot of um, components and library, uh, I guess more than 200 or even more for connecting a lot of different systems. Uh, Kafka Connect provides some different connectors as well. Uh, I don't think that we are kind of the same kind of numbers. Even if there, there is uh, a, an interesting project uh, uh, from some of our colleagues to use uh, uh, Camel connectors, so adding to Kafka Connect some connectors using Camel. With Kafka Connect, uh, you have to think about, you have to deploy a kind of uh, new cluster, which is the Kafka Connect cluster with some different workers working using these connectors and moving data across systems. Kafka Connect is really useful somehow, for example, when you want to do some um, change the database captures using the Debezium project, so moving data across databases. Uh, I would say that Camel is uh, really useful when you want to integrate things like uh, uh, HTTP application, UDP application in this case, uh, or even some other messaging system as well. Well, um, so yeah, you can find different use cases for using them both, even together, some somehow at some point. 